Welcome to Financial Investing Radio, where you'll learn the secrets for consistent, high probability returns in the financial markets for additional income to change your life. Grant applies consistent, high probability trading systems for the financial markets. He's only recently started sharing these tried and true market secrets. As a gift to listeners, Grant is offering his Roadmap to High Probability Financial Control. Go to FinancialInvestingRadio.com and download yours today. Now, here's your host and trading veteran, Grant Larson. Hey everybody, this is Grant. It is good to be here with you. Um, one time when I was in high school, a friend of mine and I were climbing the cliffs in western Colorado. We got to a certain point and determined that we could see the view better if we dropped down to what appeared to be a small cliff. And uh, we were right. As we dropped off that cliff down to a lower spot, the, the view was better and we could see uh, you know, and overlook the valley below. Now, immediately below that spot was a cliff of about 500 feet. And in time, we decided, hey, let's start heading back um, because the, the sun was going down. And so we to get back, we actually had to climb back up uh, that cliff that we dropped down uh, so we could find our route to, to get off the mountain. Um, but we soon learned that there were no handholds for us to use to get out and we discovered we were trapped. We couldn't go down as that was a long drop, but we couldn't climb out either. When, so the question I have is, when does it make sense to double down uh, in our trading? Have you ever done that? Now, earlier in my trading, I did that, and it's a very scary thing to do. It's a deceptive technique that pulls you in and rewards you once or twice. You know, at that point you start thinking, hey, I found the technique to grow rich, right? Well, it's about that time that the market teaches you a painful lesson and it extends prices beyond what the leverage in your account can handle. Now, when this happens, you take a tremendous loss. Has it ever happened to you? Well, it's happened to me uh, years ago. So how do you break this habit? You know, what techniques should you use instead? I'd like to know what techniques work best for you. For me, I found that the old adage of taking small losses and letting my winners run as long as I can still is the most sound technique. Now, in the case of this cliff, which appeared from the onset to be small and not a big issue, I also learned that we had not examined the route to get back up before jumping down. We just walked up to it. We looked. We said, well, that's about a... Uh, 20 foot cliff, we could probably hang down a little bit and then maybe drop the remaining way in, which we were able to do, of course. But like I said, we hadn't stopped to actually evaluate how, what's our route to get back out of here. So when we, you know, when, you know, we, we can all make these kinds of mistakes in trading, right? So what's the route? What's the route for a trade? Well, as it turns out, we need to also examine a fair number of variables before we make a decision. Things like multiple time frames, what's happening on those, or the market volatility, or what are our stop management rules, or what are related markets doing, and other things. All right, those are just a few of the things. Now, those elements that I'd mentioned, they constitute the route to take. And the most important part of this route is, uh, you know, that we take is the stop management or the risk management part. And that is the only part you can control, right? It's crucial to have a solid list of things to track as part of building your trade. Like I'd mentioned, time frames, market volatility, what related markets are doing and so on, right? That's important to have those things. But the most important part is to have that stop management, that risk management piece in place. Now, what saved us on this cliff was a small dead tree. It was the only tree there. The, the cliff itself, the, the ledge on this cliff that we had dropped down onto, on the ledge was this dead tree. 
and uh, it's it was the only um, only item on there actually. Anyway, we were able to take that that dead tree and we laid it up against the cliff that we were trying to get out. Now my friend was much taller than I, and so as we took the dead tree and laid it against the cliff, he was able to to climb to the top of the dead tree while it was laying against the cliff. He could extend himself and find a handhold and pull himself out. But I was not able to reach that same place, or he could, because I was much shorter. So we devised a plan to take our jackets, and we tied them together, tied the arms on them together. And as I climbed to the top of the tree against the cliff, he lowered the jackets that were tied together. He lowered that to me, and um, as I grabbed a hold of it, he was unable to pull me up. I was just too much dead weight, you know, had too many hamburgers. Anyway, so while um, I was standing on the top of the last branch of the dead tree while holding on to the jackets, I had to do my part and run across the face of the cliff using his weight as leverage. So I had to do the part of running and pulling myself up as I was running across the face of the cliff. Now, if I lost my grip on those jackets or if those arms on the jackets, if the knot came untied, I would have fallen 500 feet down to my death. Um, this is the impact of doubling down, right? This is why we don't do it. Now, in this case, we were lucky and it worked, right? But this is not a sustainable strategy. Uh, neither is it a good uh, cliff climbing strategy, I might add. So, you know, the net of this is put in place a simple approach to include a set of reliable factors to evaluate and, and be rigorous about that, right? Write them down. It's the things that you always evaluate. You just go through those every time and have your rules around stop management every time. It is the only thing that you can actually manage. So take the small losses and let the winners run. It is much safer to do that than to try to run across the face of a cliff. So thanks for joining, um, and uh, let me know what techniques you use. Until next time, keep your feet on solid ground. Thank you for joining Grant on Financial Investing Radio. Remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Don't forget to download your free roadmap to high probability financial control before you make an investment decision. Visit financialinvestingradio.com now.